Okay, let me know if everybody can see the slide. <laughs> I almost said good morning. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening. <laughs> I don't know what time it is. <laughs> I've been inside in quarantine for seven weeks. Every day is the same. <laughs> Anyways, welcome everyone. How's everyone doing today? My name is Melissa Arma, and I own my own company called The Stock Swoosh. And tonight, we're going to talk about how you can earn a living trading right from home. So for those of you that have never heard of me before, <coughs> excuse me, I created my own strategy. Gosh, it was a long time ago now, 12 years ago. And I've been doing nothing but this ever since. So I do use my strategy for day trades. And I also use my strategy for options. But it's the same strategy, okay, either way. So it's on gaps. So I'm gonna go over this here tonight, talk a little bit. If you have questions, you can put them in the room, all right? And if you'd like to call me, you can call me at 929-3200-GAP or email me at melissa at the stock swoosh dot com, okay? All right, so for those of you that are here, I don't know, some of you may be training. I do see some familiar names. Some of you have maybe new to the market, <clears throat> but it's funny because once you get the market bug, I don't think it ever gets away from you. <laughs> You've only got really two choices. You either get bit by the market bug and then you start trading and then you're involved with the market pretty much the rest of your life or <coughs> excuse me or you eventually will find your way into it at some point because it will bug you and bug you and bug you until you actually then just say I'm gonna jump into this I'm gonna do it so bottom line is for those of you that are thinking about trading it's a good time to start okay it's earning season Thanks, Kathy. Yeah, I actually, I just was, uh, I was coughing, but I'm fine. And again, if anyone has any questions, just type them in the room. <coughs> and I apologize that I'm, that I'm coughing. So if the market bug has you, then you probably are ready to start making money trading. And when I started out, I was just doing this and I was back and forth making money and losing until I created my own system, okay? So it's not like everybody wakes up one morning, decides they wanna trade and then makes money. And a lot of times what happens is people will do something, <clears throat> follow someone, take a trade from some newsletter online or a free webinar, a free trading room trial, make money and then think they know how to trade. Actually trading takes a very, a very thoughtful process. For me, I get up very early in the morning and I go through my process. It's a checklist that I go through each morning. It is a very thoughtful process that I do hours before the market opens. And that, so it's not taking pot shots. It's not gambling, okay? And again, I've been doing this a long time. So for me, it's easy. But if you're new, it definitely takes learning and a skill. And you can make money in the U.S. stock market. One of the reasons why a lot of people from a lot of different countries want to trade the market in the U.S. is because of the fact that the U.S. market has volume and volatility. Not every market does. And there are also companies that I trade that are well-known companies. You've heard of them before. Apple, Amazon, Tesla, Boeing, things that you would know and you would be familiar with, okay? But the question is, how can you make money in the market and how can you do it? And again, for me, I really think a lot of it has to do with consistency, okay? It's a consistency over and over and over again that I am constantly going after the same thing that I'm looking for, but it's in different stocks, okay? But it's pattern recognition and it's really based on technical analysis. So for those of you that don't know what technical analysis is, it's looking at a chart. It's reading a chart and it's going through 
and finding the gaps. And I'm going to go over once we get to some charts here what a gap is. But it's a system and a strategy that I use on a consistent basis that allows me to be able to make money. I don't veer off of it. I never change what I'm doing. I do the same thing almost like a robot every day, but I apply it to different stocks, okay? And I also tend to mainly want to short, okay? So I'm mostly short. I will go long, but most of the trades that I do are to the downside, okay? Any questions here so far? Okay. So trading for me, like I said, is fun and easy because I'm very confident what I do. Of course I would be, I invented my own system. And actually every month when I do my class, it just continues to strengthen my own confidence and conviction in my system. So if you decide to join and you wanna learn what I know, and then you're in the trading room with me every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that helps your confidence too. Again, like if you were playing a sport, the more you golf, for example, the better a golfer you are. It's doing it over and over and over again. And as you continue to do it over and over again, you make money and gain your confidence level, which helps you make more money. I call it conviction, but it's all together. It's confidence and conviction, okay? Any questions here so far? Okay. Anyways, for me, it's, it's just something that I'm doing over and over. But for you, if you've not been successful, if you've had very limited success or you haven't had any success in the market, you know, you really have to take a step back, look at what you're doing, and maybe what you're doing just flat out doesn't work or maybe there is no strategy at all. Uh, you can be successful trading, but you have to find those special keys to unlock that success. And it really has a lot to do with the strategy. And you have to learn it, and then not only that, you have to apply it day after day consistently. So what I do works in any market. And right now, the market has been extremely choppy. Market's been trading in a tight range for the last month, really the last two weeks. Um, JD, what is your question? You lost me there. You can use my system for swing trades, but I don't do swing trades. I do options because they have a fixed risk. So the difference between just taking 100 shares and holding it in overnight uh, versus an option is that with an option, you have a fixed risk. You can't lose any more than the cost of the option. And with a swing trade, you can lose an unlimited amount. I don't know if that answers your question or not. <clears throat> it looks like it kind of cut off there. Does that answer it? So again, the strategy that I use is based on stocks gapping, okay? So you can unlock the keys to your personal profit potential in the market, but you have to do something that works. And it, you have to have a strategy. A lot of people change what they're doing every other day. Some people go long and short the same stock on the same day. What's the strategy there? Zero, zip, nothing, okay? And again, in this type of market, you really have to know what you're doing in order to make money. And I credit myself to that because I've just stayed right on top of some of the things that we've been doing over and over and over again, just not letting up. And I've been right. So you have to learn a strategy. My strategy is gaps. Gap trading is where the real money moves and momentum of the market take hold. Trading gaps makes it possible to trade for a living. So a gap is a difference between the close and the open. That is what a gap is. That's all that it is. Now, does every gap that occurs in the market or in stocks work to play? No, okay? So I've invented again, 12 years ago, a system where I qualify them to determine if a gap is gonna move, if it's gonna have any volume, momentum on the live day, if it's gonna have a big move, and also, is it gonna move up or is it gonna move down, okay? Because that is an important part, because how do you make money in the market? If something rallies, you have to be long. If something drops, then you have to be short, okay? So it's the focus on the one strategy, again, doesn't matter whether you do an options or whatever day trades, and I will show you some uh, options and day trades we did in the last two weeks here in this class. It, it's neither here nor there about 
how you would take the train. Because an option trade is just a one way to do a trade. You don't need margin to do options trades, okay? But I don't do any swing trades because I feel like there is unlimited risk for that. So anyways, getting back to what I was saying, one quality strategy is all you need to pay yourself on a regular basis. And it's the consistency, really. And most of the time I'm trading just in the morning, okay? So it's between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time that you'd be looking for that time of the day to trade if you wanted to trade with me. Having one powerful strategy that pays you will open up your eyes to the true profit potential of the market. I think what's really interesting is a lot of the people that have been with me, um, particularly this year, have really seen some of the moves that some of these stocks have had. You know, and, and I mean, it's, Tesla was one of them earlier in the year. Things can go far greater than you think that they can, up or down. And just because you have a small account doesn't mean you can't make a lot of money. It doesn't mean that every trade you take is going to be huge or go to the dream target. Most of the days, you're just chunking it out. But you will have those trades that go big. And the market can offer you a real lifelong career if you have a strategy that makes money consistently. Professional gaps are a high income pain strategy, and that's what I do. Now, what is a professional gap? A professional gap is a gap that moves in the direction that the gap is happening. It is called a professional gap because professional traders and investors are making and creating the gap, not retail traders, okay? There is a difference. Um, particularly right now in this market, again, in the last week, you have not had institutional money moving this market either way, up or down. It has been, it's been moved baby moves it's not going anywhere at all we've been sidelined because retail traders are the only ones that are making these gaps we've had no momentum hardly in the market when i say market i'm talking about the spy that's the index i typically watch <clears throat> market bender your question is stuck if you're typing something and kimberly um i don't know who you were trying to private message but there's nobody here named ravi you can't talk to people in the room. The only person you could talk to is me. It's the same way in the trading room. Um, I'm in charge. I only see all the comments. And it's really just to, to uh, have the focus in the room. And I'm the teacher. I'm the one in charge of calling the trades and answering the questions. <clears throat> I, I've been in rooms before when I first started trading in 2008. People have political discussions. It, it's really a disaster. So I've closed off the room when I started the business for the purposes of focus, because the only focus we really have in the trading room is making money. And then sometimes I teach after the fact. But Market Bender, your question is stuck. I don't know if Kathy, you can, you can help him. Anyways, in the case of a bullish gap, professionals are buying the stock. Therefore, the stock moves higher on the trading day. In the case of a bearish gap, professionals are shorting the stock. Therefore, the stock moves lower on the trading day. Again, is every gap down going to sell off? No. Is every gap up going to move higher? No. Okay. Quite frankly, in fact, um, lately it's been the opposite in some of the things. But I name my gap rating system the golden gap for a reason. It's like finding gold in the market because it has high odds of working. Everything when you do in trading is high odds. That's why you have to take a fixed risk. You can't just risk your whole account in a trade. What if you have $5,000 in, in your account? You can't risk an entire that whole five thousand in a trade. Every trade I take is based on assessing the risk, high odds or low odds. And I say I don't want to take any low odds trades. So I say, or does this have high odds? If it does, then I do it. So I have a twenty six point rating system. Twenty is the cutoff. Twenty points or more, I say this is high odds. Under twenty, low odds. So guess what? I don't do it. So golden gaps is 20 points or more on the 26-point scale. There are gaps that have a high odds of working on the day in the correct direction of the gap with a large momentum move. And by high odds, again, I mean an 80% win ratio. And this is across the board with the day trades or the options. Same, same system again, okay? Okay, I thought you had a question, Market Bender. Very good. Thanks, Kathy. Anyways, getting back to odds. Anything you can do to put the odds in your favor to trade will give you an edge. Because there's tons and tons of people that are trading the market on any given day, okay? So you have to have an edge. What is my edge? My edge is I have a rating system that I prepare and use in the pre-market before I ever do any trades at all. 
I know exactly what I want to do in the pre-market before 9.30 every day. And if I don't like anything, I'm not trading. So I know my trades in the morning early. That is an edge for sure. Most day traders don't even decide what they're doing till after 10 o'clock or after the open. Secondly, I also am really good at reading the open first 30 minutes of the day, particularly the first five minutes of the day. So I can read a chart very well in the one minute, which is again, very aggressive, but that's something that gives me an edge, okay? And three, I trade gaps, which gives me an edge too. Many people don't understand gaps. <clears throat> Many people that trade don't, Many people that are in the market investing money don't. Many people that teach don't, or they teach the opposite of what their students supposed to be doing with gaps. I don't know why it is, but when I first started out and I was trading, <laughs> I'll tell you this story really quickly. I made a lot of money one day with a gap. I didn't know what I was doing, but I said, wow, there's something to this. And then I tried to find and see what was out there on gaps that I could take a class myself. This is before I even taught myself anything that I do right now. And th there was nothing out there, or what was was crap. It was absolutely st just stupid information. It made no sense, it was just dumb. And that's why then I realized I had to figure out something myself. It was a process, it took about three years. But even today, 12 years later, there is nothing out there about gaps that is quality with the exception of my system. And I will say that full throttle. Um, I, I just think that people find gaps complicated. They don't understand them. And particularly because of the way they have big moves, people find them scary. And therefore, then they shy away from them. But if you know what to do, they can be extremely pro uh, profitable. And not only that, the probability, again, because we're looking for high odds, is something that you have to you have to take advantage of. Because on any given day, all well, hundreds of thousands of stocks that trade in the market, most things will move with the overall market, okay? So the reality is that unless you know how to read the market, if you have to have the market to get a move in a stock, okay? And this isn't even just trend trading. This is just in general things move with the market in any given day. If you can't, if you can't pinpoint and predict the direction the market's going to go on that particular day, like today on Monday, then you're losing. And it's very difficult to trade and it's very choppy then and you're basically scalping. So I'm trying to find things that don't need the market, okay? For example, today the market rallied and we shorted UA. I don't have the trade in here, <coughs> but that was one of the trades today and it worked and it had zero to do with the market. So the high probability is a very important piece of my system and the fact that you don't need the market to use my system, okay? But the high probability is the quality and detail in the rating system. Again, I'm doing this in the pre-market. 26 points is an enormous amount of detail, and that's why I get up early. It takes about five to 10 minutes to rate one gap if you're new. For me, I can do it faster, but I do take my time. I don't like to rush it, okay? Now this was back on the six. What is today? It was last week, I guess, yeah. Today's May 11th. Yeah, this was last week. This is Boeing. See this little guy here? So what is a gap? This is a daily chart of Boeing. A gap is a difference between the close and the open. So Boeing closed here, open here. So it closed at a different price than an open, and that's a gap. This also gapped down. Closed here, gapped down. Open, dropped. So this doesn't even look like much probably to you, but it actually was a really nice trade. So what did we do? And again, this is a day trade, okay? Entry is 125.75, stock was not small, but this stock can move a lot. 127.25, shares was 1,500, risk 22.50. Then we add in to the position, again, playing momentum. Taken on down, this was a short, Okay, the bar is red, it was a short, it gapped down and we shorted it and then dropped. Exit was 121.40 and you say, wow, that's a lot of money. Yes, it is. This is a day trade, $9,690. How? Because 3,000 shares was the position and the stock moved. So the average price of the position was around 124 and change and you see it dropped three bucks. Boeing is in a great example of a stock. In fact, we shorted this today. 
We did another trade in this today. <clears throat> Boeing is a great example of a stock that has big moves, okay? So we want to trade stocks that have big moves, and we want to trade stocks that move at all. <clears throat> and we want to trade stocks that have volume too, okay? Now, I get this question a lot. Well, 3,000 shares, do 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 You don't need to take 3,000 shares. You could have taken 300 shares. You could have taken 200 shares. It's still a profitable train. In order to get up to this point to work up to this sizing, obviously you have to have the account size to do it. But you can trade my system with a small account. Your position sizes would be smaller. I'm pointing this out because to me this is common sense, but a lot of people, I don't know why they, they think it's not common sense. And I've been putting in the emails, <coughs> excuse me, uh, beginner examples for people to see, but I don't know if that really comes across to people. Um, it's the idea of the potential that when you have a small account, again, say $2,500, that you take it and you build it to five, then you have an account that's five, then you build it to 10, then you have an account with 10, then you build it to 20. One of the traders, <coughs> actually I haven't talked to her for a while, but about a couple weeks ago, she started out the year with 100 grand and she has made $400,000 this year. Again, in the first four months of the year. So you take an account and you build it and you grow it. And that's how you do it. And as you're going on along the way, you're learning as well with me in the room. Okay. Market vendor is pointing out exactly. No, you did not need $375,000 to make this trade. So before I answer this question, does anyone here want to explain to market vendor why you didn't need $375,000 to make this trade? Is that, let's see if anyone knows. This is not an options trade. This is a day trade. Chait, I see you here. Chait is not a student of the class, but Chait's on the options letter. Kimberly, you're following me for a while. Tell Market Bender why he didn't need 375 grand to take this trade. Vito, you've been following me forever too. JD. So come on, some of you have to know this. Some of you have been following me way too long, and if you can't answer this question, well, I have a lot more beginners out there than I thought that I did. Nobody's even guessing? Am I talking to myself? Nobody wants to say the answer. They're afraid they're going to be wrong. Oh, come on. I want you people to learn something. Kimberly got it. JD's writing. Chate says, what's the question? Chate, you stinker. Chate's like, oh, you're talking? <laughs> All right, here. Okay, I'm going to take 1, 2, 4, 63 times 3,000. Market Bender, are you listening? This is where Market Bender was coming up with a, around the roughly 375, but the exact, exact is 373,890. Now, Kimberly got it. She was the first one, though. She gets a clap today three she said margin now sorry i took this off here let me put this back so it's called margin buying power there's different things market bender can google it but kimberly got the answer okay so no you did not need three hundred seventy three thousand eight hundred ninety dollars in cash every trade that is a day trade or an equity trade is traded on margin. Why? Because we're flat before four o'clock. This trade, I forget exactly when we exited it, but it was well before four o'clock. Now, when you do an option, that is not on margin. This is not an options trade. We will talk about some options trades today, but just so you, I can clarify, you don't use uh, margin for options. So for example, if this had cost a dollar, per contract, I'm just making up to example, that's all that you would pay, okay? If you've got one contract, it would be $100. Anyways, every day trader that trades uses margin. 
Oh, I thought you meant cash. Yeah, of course, then, then, then you do know about margin market vendor. Yes, that's right. So again, there's different types of trading accounts. For example, there's something called a proprietary day trading account. They give 10 to 1 margin. So how much cash, real cash on 10 to 1 margin, would you have needed in an account to take this trade? Around 37000 That is still a huge amount of profit based on your cash position market vendor. That's right. So you would have made almost 10% of your account in one train, that's huge. And again, if you don't have $37,000 in cash, then you're not taking a 3,000 share position. Then you're taking whatever you can afford. If you have, for example, $5,000 in a prop account, guess how much margin you would have at 10 to 1? 50,000. So let's just figure it out. 50,000 divided by 12463 you could have taken 400 shares so if you took 400 shares and i'm doing this for you are you listening to me market vendor if you did 400 shares how much money would you have made on this trade one thousand two hundred ninety two dollars again this is with a cash position of five thousand and you would have made twenty percent on your cash in one trade you don't need to take three thousand shares 400 shares of this would have made you 1200 bucks on a $5,000 prop account. That is huge. You trade futures because you don't need a lot of money to trade, but you can make a lot of money with stocks. And no, you do not need a lot of money. And by the way, anyone that has less than $2,500 or even $5,000 really has no business trading futures or anything else. And that's my professional opinion. You get big moves in stocks. This move $3. You could have made $1,200 with 400 shares, and that's not a lot of shares, and you would have needed only $5,000 in a prop account to do it. So again, this was a good example, because if you have five grand, and you can make 20% of your money in one trade in one day, that's huge, and you're not gonna make that with futures consistently. So that was a good explanation. Did, I, did everybody follow me there? Kimberly got the answer right, okay? Even the market bender didn't mean cash. It was a good explanation because I'm sure not everybody knew what I meant. And again, maybe I need to explain these things more. I mean, I, you know, my assistant does the emails and I, there's only so much time in a day. And this has been a very active year. But maybe I need to do some more explanation of that in, in, in some of the emails so people understand. But this is why I'm spending an hour with you here today to, to talk about it. Now, as I was saying, Chate's on the options newsletter. I called puts in Boeing today, okay? I've been calling puts in Boeing. They've been working. Um, so, you know, you can trade options and you don't need margin, but you gotta get the timing right. Luckily, that's something that I'm good at as well. You would have had to have the timing right for this trade. Going back to the daily chart here, here's this little guy over here. If we shorted this, we had to get the timing right that day. Again, May 6th, if we don't get the timing right, say when I call it, boom, this has to drop on May 6th, this has to drop even faster than the option. And an option, I've been calling them out one to two weeks, but this has to go immediately in six and a half hours or from whatever time we do it, do you see? So you have to get the timing right in trading, no matter if it's options or day trades. And you got to get the direction right. So how do I know this? I use, again, the rating system that pinpoints large institutional money. So gaps are created with large institutional money. That's what makes the gap in the first place. Again, sometimes there are big gaps. Sometimes there are baby gaps. That Boeing was a baby gap. It was not a big gap from the close to the open, just so you know. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Those are the ones I'm going for, okay? Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and then confirm that the large money will flow with it because you have to get that continuation from the open. Otherwise, it doesn't go anywhere and you can't make any money. By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side and then you play it. Gaps are an event and create a sense of urgency. We gotta go right now, whether that's up or down.
Thus, an action is being forced by participants of the stock, whoever's in it, the longs and the shorts, the buyers and the sellers. And this is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading the side of power and money. And that's what moves the market. Now, <clears throat> this was an option, and we'll look at the day chart in a minute. This was April 30th, and I called it out from last Friday. This was a nice one. This had follow through from Thursday to Friday and Friday to Monday. This was a fixed cost. So again, we're now we're flipping, no margin, five bucks, that's it. So if you bought 10, it cost $5,000. If you bought 15, it cost 7,500. If you bought one, it cost $500, that's it. Now there is a requirement with brokers that you need, I think a minimum of $2,000 to open an options account. So even if you did one of these, you still would have had to have a live account at a broker with a $2,000 minimum, okay? But if you had, you could have made what? One contract, you could have made $600. So that is more than 100% of your cash that you would have made profit. And that is a very, very good trade, okay? Again, if you bought 15, if this is your risk, and by the way, your risk should be the same or close to the same in every trade you take, whether it's options or day trades, it's a consistency, okay? Anyways, caution, this was five. <clears throat> that, was, that was a good cost for this. I've noticed the price of these puts has dropped, which is good for us. Sold at 11. Profit was $9,000. Again, you don't hold them all till the expiration. When you get the momentum, then you take it and you get it. Now, going back here, see this? here so this was the one day here then it gapped down i called the trade i called this actually a little bit late um it's close to noon then it had boom had the follow through here so this was from the 30th to the first followed through here then once again so this was a sell-off and again, we bought the puts, which is basically shorting. So this was an option, but called it on this day here. Okay. So this is another way to trade, again, the Golden Gap system without needing margin. Market Bender doesn't like margin. Then you do options. Okay. Any questions here so far? This was another one. Again, it was a put. It was MasterCard. Same day, called it. This was around 11 o'clock. Cost of this was six, which was very reasonable. Sold at 1050. 12 contracts was a $7,200 risk. If you bought one, it was $600. Again, you could have made 450 bucks with one contract. That is a good trade. Almost 100% return on your money. Now let's look at the MA chart. Here was the day I called it gapped down, okay? So this is MasterCard, daily chart. All of these are the daily, okay? So again, this was a put, which was a short, doing the system, the same system, but using options. So you can learn the system and apply it however it works for you. And one of the things is like, if you don't have time to be in the trading room live, you know, be at your computer and do it. Say you have to go do other things or say you're working. Now, a lot of people are still working from home, but say you uh, are, are at home now, you can trade from home. But if you have to go back to an office eventually, options is a good thing to do while you're at the office because you don't have to necessarily be at your computer. When we're doing those day trades like Boeing, you have to pay attention. <laughs> you have to be there. The options, you can put the trade on. You get the email with the trade, you take it when you get the email, and then you just have to watch it. And when it moves, you get out. But some of them follow through, may not be the first day, maybe the second day, could be 24 to 48 hours, could be a couple of days. So you do what works for you as far as the system. Any questions here so far? But for me, I, I mean, I'm just in such a habit of doing this now for so long that I, I just, it's, it's like hard to explain to somebody except for this is really all that I do. So I, I think people make it harder than it is to trade because they jump around too much. They'll try futures 
Um, they'll try Forex. They'll try options. They'll try day trades. They'll try swing trades. They'll do a million different things in between. They'll do Fibonacci's. They'll do, they'll do a, a lot of different classes that probably total the same cost of my class, but they'll do several different ones and then never make any money. I, it, I think people make trading a lot harder than it is. The benefit of coming to me is you know that you're going to do gaps. You know that is the only thing that we're doing, and that's it. And then you you just say, I am going to learn this, and then that's the end of the story, and I'm not going to do anything else. Because I think people make it harder for themselves because they try to jump around too much. And then as a result of that, the consequences are they never really get good at anything. Getting good is extremely important. It's It makes a difference some days when I'm looking at the market and when I'm looking at 10 different gaps, for me to pinpoint down the exact one to do today, and again, I'm gonna go back to UA we did this morning, was a nice move. There was a lot of things to look at today. We did the exact right thing. So when you really become good at something, you have to do that one thing and focus on it. People make it harder than it is to make money in the market because they flip around. And I don't know why, because they don't, they don't, they don't make a million dollars in a week. They don't make $9,000 risking 200 bucks. I mean, people have to be realistic, again, what they can afford. 400 shares of something is still a good quality trade with profit. And, and you, have to, you have to say, I wanna make this a lifelong career. I'm looking at the longevity of this. And, and you say, I don't have $37,000 right now to take this position, but I do have five or I do have 10, you know? I always call all, everything live in the trading room. I always call the entry the stop and the target of their exit when we get out in the trading room. Yes. It's not a rule. I don't know what you mean a rule. I, I'm just, I, I call it all trades live in the room. That's the benefit of being with me in the room daily. And I also talk about the market, what I think about the market usually before the open. But I'm doing an open house this week. If anyone wants to come, you can email me if you want to come. Some of you have been following me for a while and you've never signed up. And the only reason I can say you've never signed up is what? One, you don't have the money to, to, to pay for my class. Or two, I don't know why you wouldn't sign up. So some of you really have to think about what you're doing and why you haven't signed up for some of my classes. Kimberly, you're one of those people. You were gonna do the class six months ago and you never did. And if you're here, you're, you're, there's a reason that you're here. Either something I'm saying is resonating with you that makes sense or you don't have the money to sign up yet. I don't know. But I think that this has been one of those years where people are struggling trading. Talking about this picture and just looking at this here, I mean, the market has been so choppy that people are losing and they are continually going after stuff that makes no sense. I call it pot shots, like gambling. Um, and for me, when I look at the number of trades since January 1st, not just the day trades, the options too. Man, it has been a hugely active year. I don't, I don't know why. I've done less TV. Maybe it's, you know, we're in quarantine. Nobody's going to the studio, but it has been an extremely active year. There's been stocks to trade. There's been moves to trade. There's been things to do, but it's not taking pot shots. It's, there's a thoughtful process that goes involved when I look at the market and tell you where the next move the market's going to make or when I call a trade and say it's long or short. And sometimes again, you know, when you're new, and, and this is for the new people, you may not understand everything that I do, but that's the process of learning, you know, and you just have to have an open mind about it and say, I think this girl knows what she's talking about. I'm gonna listen to her. Now, here was another one here. <clears throat> oh, this was the same day. I called the 291s. A lot of times I'll call a couple strikes. We've been doing this in the spine. We've been doing this in Boeing. We did it in the W. I can tell somebody's gonna fall from one number to the next number to the next number. And then what I do is I, I, I give people the option. If I'm calling a couple different ones, you can take it, get out. You can take one and get out. You can take two and hold them. Or you can take two, get out of one, hold the next one. And so I've been doing this a lot this year, particularly this year for the last four months because people can constantly be booking money then. So like both of these were the same timing and different strikes, but you didn't have to hold them. 
You could have taken them on Thursday, got out on Friday. You could have taken them both Thursday, got out Monday. Or you could have taken them Thursday, got out one Friday, one Monday. I know one girl in the room, she's been taking them, getting out, and then she's been taking them again. And again, I don't do that, but there's another idea too. Again, it's about chunking it out. So cost of this was $5, sold at $10.50, profit was $82.50. Again, do you have to risk $7,500 in this trade? No, this isn't on margin, but you do need this much cash in your account to place the trade at a 15 contract position. But you can buy one and still make money. So you could have bought one contract and you could have made 550 bucks. That's a nice trade. Uh, what do you, I'm not, it, what do you mean, how do I know? You don't know till I put the trade out. Kimberly, what do you mean? You don't, you don't know till you get the trade. Like, you're not going to know ahead of time. And if you're on the options newsletter, you don't even know what I'm calling till you get it. Like, whatever I happen to be looking at. Now, these ones here I've showed you, I did call later in the day. But most of them I've called in the morning. This was the same one here. So I called two different strikes, 291 and 290. That was on the 30th. Now let's talk about another day trade. This is different. Actually, let me go here to this. Let me go here to this. I'm gonna, this is a daily chart, this is Twitter. So this is a day trade now. On this day, this was not an option, but I did call an option in this too, which worked. This closed here, this got down. This was earnings. We took a stop in the first trade. We lost, okay? Shorted it. Had the stop in, got stopped. Now, that was the tally thing here. So this pushed back much more than I anticipated. We got stopped. I stayed on top of it. Remember I said this earlier. I've been really just squeezing on top of things that I like. Holding the conviction. And the second trade was big. So we stayed on top of it. Took the stop. Took the loss. Waited, waited, waited. Reshorted it. Got a nice drop in here. The tail was what stopped us out. So we reshorted it at a higher price. Because you see this here? So originally we were in it aggressively, got stopped, reshorted it actually above where the original stop was. And then we added, I saw the momentum was in, dropped, beautiful trade. Again, do you need to take this much size in this? No. The average price of this was $29.25 the exit was more than a dollar so if you have a thousand shares then you're making over a thousand bucks if you have 500 shares you're making over 500 bucks and this was not an expensive stock and again here's the day chart and i my my assistant didn't put the twitter put in here but we did a put in this too so the put in this worked boom followed through the next day but this was a bearish gap that moved lower Okay. Anyways, you know, when you're trading, even if you have any kind of comma day, a one with a comma, let alone two numbers in front of the comma, is a really, really nice uh, uh, move. Uh, I have Jackie in here. Jackie does the options and the day trades. This was last week when we did the mat and the Boeing and the W. But Jackie doesn't trade with big risk. I think her risk per trade is like, 200 bucks. So Jackie does not trade with big risk. And actually Jackie is one that is doing the options and she's like taking them, getting out as soon as she's up, retaking them and then getting out of them. She's like doing, like I'll do one trade and she'll do like two on one or three in one. But that's, that's what she's doing. So you can do that too. But anyways, she is not taking big risk. She is staying trading and she's doing options. Any questions here so far? But, you know, it, I, again, if you're interested in the open house this week, email me for the password information. It, it, seeing results counts. And some of you have been following for a while. I think you know that I know what I'm doing. And you've been in the room. And maybe some of you even have made money in the, in the room before in trials or open houses. But you, yeah, I think you have to decide how committed you are to really learning and trading. Because my, my class is $7,000. It's $69.99 for a two-day class. Right now I'm doing a special where I'm offering the trading room free to the end of the year. So that's a great deal because you could be in the room and get all my day trades for the rest of the year. Normally it's $500 a month after the class and everyone in the room normally is a student of the class. 
But, I mean, it, it's people always just look at it like a fly-by-night thing because they've never seen any uh, longevity in, the, in any success in anything they're doing. So they're constantly searching. Once you find something that works, you will stop searching and you will understand that you really can do this for months and weeks and days and years. I think some people are so short-sighted on trading or the cost of a class like mine because they just, they don't believe that it's something that they're gonna be able to do forever. But in reality, it is. I mean, people always say, well, why don't you do this? And why don't you do Bitcoin? And why don't you do something else? Why? All I've done throughout the years is take what I know and increase my risk year over year. And again, like I said earlier, I've been more active this year. So I'm just doing more trades, but using my same system and taking more risk. It wouldn't make sense for me to do anything else. This is what I do and it works. So why do something else? When you have something that works, there's no reason to do anything else. All you have to do is then do more trades or take more risk. And that's how you make more money. It's a difference again between taking 100 shares and 1,000 shares or 10,000 shares, you know? Uh, thanks, Kathy. Yeah. And Kimberly, most of the trades that we take of the cost of the options, just so you know, most of them are not pricey. Most of them are probably under seven. Seven is probably an expensive one, but we there are trades that are expensive, high price stocks that may be out of your range to take. Google, Tesla, you know, some of the ones Amazon, some of them may be $35 a share. If you can't spend $3,500 for one contract, you're not doing this. Those are not ones we do every day and not, or even every week. But most of the ones we do, I mean, I'm saying under seven, but really probably most of them are five and under, just to give you some kind of an idea. <laughs> but I have noticed, because there was a period in March where, where every trade was very expensive. I mean, the volatility, it was that, it was when the shit hit the fan and everything was closed. And remember we had the 15 day period and then it was the 30 day period. The volatility in the market market was halted every day for that one week. It was, that's I closed the room. I said, that's it, we're taking a week off. Like things were wild and the cost of everything was insane. Things have normalized now. Now again, a, there's a lot of us are still in quarantine, but things have normalized for pricing where it's not an astronomical price to take stuff with the volatility. And also, um, you know, the market isn't isn't being halted. I mean, the, that was a ridiculous week. I'll, I'll never forget it. That it, it was it was a, it probably went on for about two weeks. And then I said, that's it. We're taking a, just a little break here. Anyways, you can do golden gaps for day trades or options, as I said. And again, if you're interested in the open house this week, just email me. Making money is fun. It doesn't bother me when I take a stop because I know the next trade is probably going to work, just like the Twitter. So it's like I, I look at it, I say, wait a minute, this gap rated well. I'm not going to give up on the Twitter. I know this is going to go. Patience, patience, patience. And then I hit it again. And it's called a retake. And again, I review that in the class as well. But, um, you know, I, I, I know results are important for people and people get that. But everybody wants to be unrealistic, I think, about the timing of things. You only have a certain amount of money to trade with, whatever that amount of money is. And you have to use that money wisely. Everybody is like that. Even big funds have a certain amount of money, okay? So, and, and companies only have a certain amount of money too. Why do you think that all these companies wanting to take this PPP money? They have a certain fixed amount of money and they gotta make it work, okay? So you're no different really than a company, than a corporation, than a large hedge fund. Everybody has parameters that they have to work within those parameters. And that's how you're gonna move forward and that's how you're gonna be successful. And it is empowering to be successful and more than that, to be able to work from home. I, I never thought, you know, rewind January 2020, that I wouldn't be out of my apartment for the last seven weeks. I have not stepped onto the streets of New York City where I live, this beautiful, fabulous place for more than seven weeks. And thank God I can work from home. I can't even imagine what it is like for people. And actually I have many friends and they're, they're, you know, they're on furlough or they're being laid off and some can do their jobs from home, some can't. But it's not ideal for people unless you normally work from home. So it is very empowering to be able to work for yourself. I've never felt so empowered as I have the last few months because 
in this time of crisis, when you're relying on something that is completely out of your control, completely out of your your uh, your employer's control, I, I mean, completely out of, even out of the government's control. I mean, this this virus that has taken over the country and taken over the world, and things are not back to normal everywhere. I know things are starting to open up. Think nothing's opened up in New York. So, I mean, people. I don't know. I mean, I don't know when this country is going to get back to normal, and I really hope at least it is by the end of the summer. But it is very empowering to be able to trade and work for yourself. The market never closed, even in those difficult periods when it was halted. The market is open and relied on, and it's there every day, Monday through Friday. It opens and it closes. And, and I mean, that's saying a lot. Kathy works from home, too. Luckily, Kathy was there. Your tickets for a concert, it got rescheduled to 2021? My God, why, why that far out? A year? Gosh, I hope things get back to normal. July 2021? Yikes. Whew. Well, well they, they said they're, they have the football schedule out. Apparently, they're going to have games in the fall, but I don't know if people are going to be in the stands. Anyways, the Golden Gap uses a 26-point checklist to train. So I get up in the morning, I go through the checklist, I rate the gap, and then as I was saying to JD, I call the trades live in the room. So I, I use this rating system for a purpose. It's to find the high probability of directional bias for the entire day in an ideal world, okay? Two big moves of the day, again, ideally. Early confirmation of the bias in the move between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time and precise entries with follow-through on a good risk-reward. I'm trying to make one-to-one -one if I can take it, whether it's a day trade or whether it's a, an option, <clears throat> sometimes or more. But that's my goal, okay, when I'm looking at the target. But I'm always looking at the daily chart, and I'm using that to analyze that on a large time frame, then to make trend decisions on the directional bias for the gap. Again, is it a long or is it a short? Is it a put or is it a call? All large traders of every kind look at large time frames to make decisions, particularly institutional traders, and they are in this market, okay? And I'm trying to make entry decisions then on a small time frame, like the one minute. So I traded in the one minute. If you come to the open house this week in the trial, you'll see I'm calling trades in a one minute chart. That has a high degree of focus and accuracy. But using the daily chart to make decisions for the stock pick, it allows for accuracy in the direction and then putting the stop in so I can take several thousand shares, okay? And get in and get out. And again, we're usually in in a few minutes. I'm not in something for six hours during the day, even though we, we are in trades and we have to be flat by four. We'll talk about the day trades. But using the one minute chart allows for good risk to reward trades with accuracy, okay? So again, what's a good risk to reward? One is good, you hold it longer, you can get two or three. Four is great sometimes. Sometimes we do an ad, like I was saying. An ad means I can see the momentum is coming in and it's going to follow through. And I'm not doing that with the options, but you could. Uh, you could, actually. Usually what I'm doing is the, the different strikes. And to me, that's kind of like an ad because we're really still in the same stock. Uh, you know, separate train, but same stock looking for a bigger move. And again, I think 50% is good in an option, but ideally I'm trying to get them to 100, okay? One to one. Anyways, the Golden Gap strategy uses a rating system which pinpoints opportunity for you to enter before the big move happens. And again, that is the key. I'm in aggressively, I'm in quick, I'm in fast. I'm in between 9.30 and 10 a.m., like I said. I have it pre-planned in the pre-market what I like to do, what I want to do. But you do have to use stops, like I said with the Twitter, that Twitter rally. If we hadn't had the stop in, we would have been we would have been down an unlimited amount before the stop went and sold off. Then, so you gotta use stops. Any questions here? And I always get this question too. Think of it like whatever amount that you want to make and back it up. So, say for example, you want to make a thousand dollars a week, okay? I'd say then your goal should probably be, or you should probably risk, about $250 a trade. I think that's probably a good, a good suggestion. It gives you five dates. You know, one or two trades is not going to work out. So you risk $250 a trade, and you're looking to make 1000 bucks a week. And that's four grand a month. That's good. 
Many people are not making a thousand dollars a week trading. So I would take your goal and then back it up. If you want to make a thousand dollars a day, your risk needs to be a thousand dollars a trade. And you cannot risk a thousand dollars a trade with a five thousand dollar account. Doesn't matter how much margin you have. You would need at least ten thousand, ideally fifteen thousand, to risk a thousand dollars a trade. Okay? Because again, what if the first trade I call, like the Twitter, has a stop and you have to take the second trade? Okay? So you have to be able to take more than one trade per, per day. Even though many trades we do, like the UA, the UA went immediately. Okay? So anyways, it, you know, you have to think about one, do you really want to do this? Like, how committed are you? Like, do you really want to trade? Two, it, why are you doing this? You want to make money on the side or do you really want to do this for a career? Like I knew when I decided to do it that I wanted to do it for a career. I was doing mortgages. I wanted to get out of the business. I wanted a new career. Like I, that was the reason I got into it. And I knew that all along. <laughs> and that's probably why I really dug my heels into figuring out a system, even though it took me three years. Like I was determined to, to make it and figure this out. I think when, you know, when you're doing something else, that's great. You make the transition to, to trading full time, but you have to know, like, I really want to do this. And having that attitude, like where you're really determined, will help you make it. It will help you get there because you got to take it seriously. Okay. And if you're at a certain age in your life where you feel like you should be doing better, and this is, I mean, this is very interesting because, I mean, who would have thought that, you know, 14% of the people in the United States would be unemployed. 14%. That's crazy. But if you're at a certain age in your life where you're not doing as well as you feel like you should be doing, and this is pre-COVID-19, before this, before all of this happened, you know, you can do something about it. But again, you have to be serious about it. And, and I think like people feel often like things are out of their control. It's not out of your control. It's just a lot of times things happen and people then don't know what to do, get confused or are scared to act. You do know if you want to do this or not. You don't need me to tell you. And I don't know if trading is for you or not, but you do know if you're bitten by the bug, like I said earlier, the market bug or not. You either are or you aren't. It's the level of <laughs> seriousness that is up to you. So, you know, and what I've found, you know, since I've started the stock swoosh, it's 2012, I've had the business for the last eight years. I've, I've, come in, I've come in contact with more people that are not serious about trading than are. So that, that tells me something in, in an eight year period. And that's one of the reasons, again, why many traders fail, because they simply are not serious about doing it. They, they say that they are, but they're not really. It's, the, it's not just talk, it's about action. And it's about really meaning what you say and putting some meat and potatoes behind it. But anyways, in today's world, it's just not the same as 25 years ago, or even four months ago, actually. <clears throat> what we think is a secure job today may be gone tomorrow. No fault of your own, okay? So look at the world economy and the decisions that lawmakers are making for you. Kind of scary when you think about that right now. This is why people are protesting and rioting. Do you want to create your own future or do you want someone else to determine it? You have to determine it for you. We can be great employees, productive, out outgoing, hardworking, and it may not even matter. People have filed for unemployment, no fault to them. Nima Marcus, which is a store that I love to shop at, just declared bankruptcy last week. Very sad, okay? They had to close. But, you know, people can be great employees, work hard, and in the end, the company can't keep you on. Even with the PPP, some people are being laid off because this is going on far too long or far longer than anyone has, had anticipated it would back in March. If a company has poor management, they may fail, and it has nothing to do with you, or your industry might fail, or the time or the circumstances, look what's happening in the world today, and it's nothing to do with you. Um, you're a skilled person, you have a great mind, you can work for yourself in the market. Yes, it does cost money. Yes, it does take a level of determination. Yes, it does take work, but you can do it. 
and the sooner that you're better because you can see from this year how things can take a turn and again no fault of yours but this is the world that we live in and the smart people the people that are really getting ahead they don't whine and complain and make excuses they say this is what it is this is what i have to do and they go out and they do it okay you can create your own job security you can be an independent person you can create your own opportunity by taking it upon yourself to learn how to trade the market and make money trading. That is what I did 12 years ago. When the mortgage industry was collapsing in 2007 and 2008, I knew that I had to get out. And, you know, fate. Fate was that I found out about trading in the market. Any questions here so far? Anyways, talking about the system. The more often you make money on a consistent basis, the more confidence you will build in yourself. And then you get the conviction, the confidence that helps you train well. You're making money along the way. Again, I call it chunking it out. And that helps you produce positive results. It helps you grow your account. And, and then eventually will help you take more risk, okay? Because even if you said, well, I have 100 grand to take this trade, are you gonna use XYZ amount percentage of, of, of an account even if you had a big account? You still have to really know what you're doing. You know, you have to say, I know this is gonna work, okay? And again, the time that's involved with the, with the level of understanding helps. It's the, it's the knowledge that helps you take the risk. So how, do I, how am I able to take big risk in my trades? Because I believe in the system and I have such a high level of knowledge, okay? No one would risk $7,500 in a trade if they didn't feel it had a high odds of working, even someone that had millions of dollars. Just think about it, common sense. And it's the same way with someone with a small account. It isn't any different. The, the percentage isn't any different, okay? If you have knowledge and you have a small account, you can take that and you can use it to get ahead. Anyways, you need to have the right attitude. And if you do, you can make it big. Anyways, my system is called the Golden Gap. I teach a course in it. The class is this weekend, March, no, not March, <laughs> March. I'm still back in March. May 16th and 17th is the class, this Saturday and Sunday. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. So I go through every morning, do, 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 and I go through the checklist and I do it. The Golden Gap course teaches a strategy on how to trade gaps. The course teaches a 26-point rating system to find the best gap to trade each day. And the course also teaches students how to play the stock on the day, which is the entries. And the course teaches students chart analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. It's a complete system. Go over the system, the entries, the targets, the gaps. Again, I prefer to short, although we will go long. Um, oh, here was another trade I guess my assistant put in here. This was TSN. This was last week. This was a putt. This was a short. This dropped, someone's asking, Kimberly said, how much did they cost? This was dirt cheap. 45 cents you could have paid for one contract. You could have loaded up on this. You could have loaded up on this with a small risk. Look at that. Again, 100% return on investment. This was here, I called it. And then it went here. JD, you love my style of trading. Someday we have the capital you will join. I hope you do. I hope you do before I retire, because I'm, I'm not going to do this forever. That I, you need to know. <laughs> Anyways, then this was another trade, the QQQs. I don't know why my assistant put these at the end. Um, oh, this was a day trade. We did this here, shorted it aggressively out of the gate. This is really tiny. This is a one minute chart where we shorted the market here and we got the drop, we got the sell off. This was back, I can't even read this here. It looks like 421, it was about two weeks ago. Again, $5 move, size and the move. But even if you couldn't take 3,000 shares, if you took 500 shares, you would have made two grand or more. If you took a thousand shares, again, it would have made more than five grand. It was a huge, huge $5 plus move, okay? Almost $6 actually. Here's the sell off, boom, okay? This is a one minute chart, but it was a gap in the market. This closed here, this gap down, rallied, we did it. Here's the drop. 
Anyways, again, empower yourself to trade in your own world, in your own home, in your own apartment, wherever you live in the world, wherever you work for yourself. And it definitely changed my life and it can change your life too. And if you're feeling, again, the, the, the lack of independence people feel right now, like the government's taking over, I tell you, take your power back. You can earn money for yourself and your family, you know? And if you want to go out, go out. So make the time to start trading. Again, options you can do any time of the day. Day trades are only in the morning. The Golden Gap System is a 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. This checklist tells you what to trade, when, and in what direction. The 26-point checklist predicts directional bias in a stock. One strategy is all you need to be successful. People do too many things, and they never get good at anything. One of the reasons for my success is this is all I do, and I'm very good at it. But I'm good at it because it's all that I do. Do you understand? It's like <coughs> 1 plus 1 equals 2. So I know how to reinstitutional money. It's how I make the calls. Class is this weekend, May 16th and 17th, right before the Memorial Day holiday. You'll get in and start trading. It's still earning season. Nine to five is a class Eastern time. Cost of class is $69.99 US dollars. Email me if you want to sign up and I'm doing an offer through this Friday, roam free to the end of the year. Now, any questions with anyone? Let me just see here. I know you went a little over. Thank you for letting me do that, Kathy. Does anyone have any questions? Does anyone, if you're interested in a trial, email me. Um, let me just see what, if there's anything going on here tonight. No, I don't really see any earnings tonight here that's anything. No. Any questions from anyone? Thanks, Kathy. Listen, have a great night. If you want to come in the room this week, email me. It's Melissa at thestockswish.com. Look at that beautiful picture of New York. <sighs> One of these days, the city will be back to life again. I'm lucky I have an apartment with huge windows because some of my friends are stuck in little tiny apartments with no light. <laughs> at least I have a lot of light. All right, have a great night, everyone. Have a fabulous night and email me if you have questions about the class or the trial. Okie doke. Take care. You're welcome.